Hi church, how are you doing? My name is Olu, I'm part of the North Location and it's my pleasure to be bringing you today's devotion. Uh, and we are talking on faith. Um, so I hope you're ready with pens, papers and favorite locations as we jump into God's word together. Um, I'd love to start by sharing one of my favorite passages with you, which is um, taken from Matthew chapter eight, verse five. It's one of my favorite stories on faith. It's about a centurion, general in our kind of modern day language who came to Jesus saying my servant is sick to the point that he is paralyzed and Jesus said don't worry I will come and heal him the centurion responds and says Jesus I'm not even worthy to have you under my roof but I being a general can tell my soldiers to go they go I can tell them to come they come I've got servants I tell them to do and they do you just need to give your word and I know it will be done according to your word. Jesus says, never before have I seen such great faith, not even in Israel. One of the things that strikes me about this passage is that when the centurion first comes to Jesus, and Jesus says, I will come and heal your servant, at that point in time, Jesus doesn't make any comment about his faith. It's not until the centurion says, actually, just give your word, you don't need to come at all, that Jesus then says, this is great faith. I think there is a difference between believing and having faith. In fact, the Bible says that the devils believe that God is true and tremble because of it. So there's a bit more to faith than just believing, although belief is a big part of it. When I look at all the examples that Jesus or the Bible gives about people of great faith, I think there is one thing that really, really stands out, and that's this. That these are people that demonstrate a deep understanding of God, and as a result of that revelation, they then make space for God to move. The beauty of the centurion here is that he didn't even question it, but he said in his heart that I'm a general, a soldier, or, 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 or I'm a general, and if I tell a soldier, go, they go, come, they come, and if me being a general, a mere man, have that power, then you, God, surely, not if, surely have more power so just just do it he didn't even question it but that at that point was a moment where he was almost outdoing jesus expectation of how much he understood about the power that jesus held if that makes sense and this is a running theme about everyone the bible talks about that is that demonstrates great faith rahab the prostitute making space for Joshua and Caleb, Abraham and Sarah having a baby at such an old age. Or there's an example of what the Bible calls the Shunammite woman to whom Jesus said, it's not right for me to take the, 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 the bread of children and, and give it to dogs. I can't heal you now because I've come for the Israelites. She responds and says, well, even the dogs eat the crumbs from the ground, essentially. She's trying to say that, Jesus, I know you. I know that you have come for them, but I know you will also not deny me. Those that demonstrate what Jesus has called great faith use a deeper revelation of who he is to make space or almost command from his hand his power, if I might use that term. And it's not reckless it's not crazy. In fact, it's kind of the opposite. It's calm. It comes from a place of trust as a result of this deeper understanding of who God is. Contrast this with a few verses down in verse 33, I think it is, where Jesus says to the disciples, O ye of little faith, they were in the boat with Jesus and Jesus has said, let's go to the other side. And then came the waves and the wind. 
And they woke him up saying, Master, do you not care that we are about to perish? Now, I don't think the issue was so much that they were fearful, but it's that in that moment, they weren't able to demonstrate that deeper understanding of who Jesus was versus the storm. I don't think Jesus was not expecting them to be fearful because he did say, oh, ye of little faith. I don't think he was expecting them to not be fearful, but I do think he was expecting them to sort of say something more like, Master, you said that we should get to the other side. There's a storm, give your word so that we can make it to the other side. Faith, as the Bible says, cometh from hearing and hearing the word of God. And I think that hearing, or through that hearing comes a deeper revelation of who he is that causes us to almost outdo his expectation of what we're believing him for. He likes that. And he calls it great faith. My prayer is that through this year, you and I will be like the centurion or Rahab, the Shunammite woman, and we'll be able to demonstrate great faith and make space for God to do the greatest work yet in all of our lives. God bless you. Um, and I hope this has blessed you. And I hope we can grow and see God do great things. Amen.